Chris, it's a fact that the degree of atheism among scientists has been rising. And that disturbs me because I was trained as a scientist and I really hope that there is something beyond the physical. At times I think there really is, call it a god or something else. Uh, you're a physicist and you're a believer. How do you look at this rise of atheism among your colleagues? Yes, I'm not actually sure. Um, well, like this, I think people overemphasize the rise side of this. I mean, there have been periods in the past, beginning of the 20th century, but where Huxleys were raging around, they were certainly atheists. Um, I mean, how would you like me to address this question? You mean, what do I think was the historical process, or how do I view it personally as a uh, Christian? Uh, I think all of the above. Uh, I mean, this, this is a fact of the world. A atheism is very prevalent among scientists, hmm. uh, more so than among the general population. I think that's an fa absolute fact. Well, it's a fact about the Western world. Have you asked the Islam, Islamic countries whether it's true there? Okay, let, let's limit it to, I, I think the Islamic world would be, would be a very different place. That's correct. But let's, let's stick with the with Western, Western world. world. It's an yeah. important distinction. Okay, I, I accept that. There's more of them than us. Well, well but wait a minute. <laughs> but, but when you go, to, you go to China, yep. which I have some knowledge of, uh, you have a very high degree of atheism because mm. that's part of their uh, at least traditional culture um, uh, of recent decades. Uh, although the ancient Chinese Confucianism may or may not have... And it's linked with Buddhism, of course. Yeah, and then, but that's... Which arguably not atheist. Anyway. Right, but that's, that's a small subset. That. So, so, I mean, we're dealing with the reality <laughs> that the belief that only the physical is real is more prevalent among scientists than among the general population. Certainly in the West. Let's limit it to that. We're supposed to be rational here, mm. right? So, Why? I think rationality is overdone, actually, as a quality. Well, do you, do you really? Because that's, that, <laughs> yes, that's, really that, that's an important uh, um, characteristic, and that's, uh, that's strange coming from I mean, scientists, no? <laughs> yeah. Well, what you say may be correct about the world. I would, could be true. But let me study this. You must have fallen in love at some time in your life, yes? Uh, fair to say. Yeah, we all have. And for me, when it first happened, it was the most overwhelming experience. Mm -hmm. Now, that was such a strong experience. It comes from deep inside my soul, as it were. Mm -hmm. Can it be described purely in terms of physics? Well, maybe it can because I suppose there's a physical correlate to all our mental activity and so on. Mm -hmm. But there again, you get, you get the mind-body problem. Mm. So I don't think really you could possibly answer the question you've asked until you've solved the mind-body problem. If it turned out that people could never explain how we as us are related to the physical world, then one would have to say that actually it's not all that physicists can say was something else. That might be true. So I think at the moment, if one's honest, the scientific data is not sufficient to address the question. All one can say is, yes, it might be the case that the world is just as it is. I think it's always possible, yeah. Or it may be not so. And you're, <coughs> you're linking this not-so possibility to the human experience and therefore focusing it on consciousness? If you like, yes. It doesn't necessarily relate to a god, I might point uh, out. Okay, I agree. Uh, uh, it could just be that our human understanding of the world is deficient. And uh, I'm quite happy with that, actually. <laughs> Well, but, but, but what follows from that? I mean, we, we, do, if, if our relation to the world is deficient, what does that say about those who claim that there is only the physical? And they believe that in an affirmative sense, not, not saying that, well, we, we mm. don't know, we don't, there may or may not be a God. They say affirmatively, there is no God and there is nothing beyond the physical. Well, they say that mainly because they're physicists. I mean, they would, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, they're scientists in all different sciences. Yeah, but you see, for scientists to say there's no God doesn't really make any sense because scientists don't know about God because they don't believe in a God. So how can they say there's no God? Uh, to really say there was no God as a scientist, you would have to prove that there was no coherent collection of religious truths, in fact, commas, that could be believed, that actually would be in accord. No, I don't think so. I, th I think you could have a completely coherent uh, uh, collection of religious beliefs that were coherent and internally consistent that just had no basis in reality. There was no antecedent to which that referred. It would be very coherent. I can, you know, you, you, you have a, a, a lot of uh, fundamental cults have uh, self-consistent arguments. Yes. Any, you know, it's very easy. It's but very easy see, to have coherent views that are wrong. But you see, science itself is a self-consistent cult. I mean, we all agree as a community to look at the world in certain ways. Yeah. And we do it so much, we think this must be the only way of doing it. That's typical human hubris, particularly academics. They were actually inclined to that sort of thing. <laughs> Maybe that's just not true. Over and over again, I have emphasized this point of how we tend to assume things in advance, and then say triumphantly, ha ha, they're true. Um, 
It's just a common human problem. It is a common <clears throat> human problem, but in the project of science seems to be so different than other human <clears throat> projects because it has a, 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 a mechanism of discerning about the physical world mm. everything that is really true and falsifying those things which are not. Now, it's, an, it's incomplete, but it, it is continuously progressing. And yes, it is universal. The fact that you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or a, a Christian by culture or, or, or Islamic, when you deal with the scientific truth, all that goes away and you accept those scientific truths. Yes, That's but, the argument. It's a big, yes. a big difference in, in, in the structure of, of, of uh, the so-called epistemology, how we know things. Science is very different than everything else. No, I quickly agree. But then you see that's because you were making assumptions about reality in advance. If you assume that the world is purely physical, when you will study it as a physicist, and of course you say, ha-ha, there's nothing in the world except physics, because you made that assumption in advance. I mean, science is a community activity where we agree to deliberately limit our experience to very tiny bits which we can study properly, right? No one could describe the whole universe, it would be impossible. Mm -hmm. So we make huge uh, simplifications and we agree to look at the world in that way. But we've agreed to do that. Why is that the only way of looking at reality, I may ask? Well, because it's, the, it's not the only way of looking at reality, but it seems to be the only way of looking at reality that gives you consistent results across cultures. That to me is a pretty well, important Well, it's fact. the only way of looking at reality as far as physics is concerned, yes. Well, any, uh, any, uh, well, any religious belief is contradicted across cultures. Scientific beliefs, once they progress to, to general understanding, are not contradicted. That's a powerful differentiation. So in, in order to assess how good you are at, at, at dealing with what's real as opposed to what is fanciful. Well, when you say religious beliefs are contradicted across cultures, do you mean that different religions don't cohere with each other, or what the Muslims don't agree with Christianity? Yeah, I mean, okay. that's, that's sure. okay. yeah. Well, one of the... But they do agree on the scientific oh, principles. Oh, yes, yes, no one denies that. And yes, that, that's a fundamental difference. No one denies that, no one denies that. Um, I mean, one of the... One of the big developments, I suppose, in the last 20 years has been also the growth of interfaith movements. So, you see, it was also a movement on the religious side, where I think most thoughtful people realise it's a bit arrogant to say, well, Christian God is right, everything else is wrong. And that maybe, if there is a God, God manifested himself more than once in different ways. Sure. That's which right. I'm personally very happy with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it's obviously that Islam, for example, it coheres with religion, Christianity in that sense. They both actually have the same God, supposedly. Mm -hmm. um, so... If you say, well, does Buddhism cohere with it? Well, Buddhism has a different metaphysical view altogether. And again, we have to be so careful about this. We, we are humans. We only see the world as we see it because we're made the way we are. We must be extraordinarily careful not to say that's how reality is. I mean, if a Buddhist says, well, he gets into certain mystical trances where he or she sees the world quite different, who are we to say that's not real? All we can say is we don't ourselves experience the world like that. Well, I think we can say that we can correlate those experiences with certain brain functions and, and electrical activities, and the more we learn, the more we can see that, the more detailed it's going to be. And so uh, people can claim whatever they want, and if it, it helps them, I, I'm, I'm more than willing for people to have their own experiences. That, that's fine. I'm not... I'm not trying to <laughs> prevent them from doing it. Yeah, well, I'm not, uh, not that for me to be gracious. Uh, it's just that I'm, I'm very happy for them to do it. But I, if, I, but I don't learn anything from that because I, I, if, if I can't know it to be true, what, what does it mean? Well, you can't know it to be true as a scientist. That's correct. You're yes. a physicist like me. Of course, it's a sort of category of doing. When people talk about these deep mystical feelings, they're not using the same language as the language of science. It will be a category error to take the language of science, translate it across, say, aha, it contradicts, therefore that's wrong. That's not right. It's not even logically, it's not actually philosophically correct. Um, all one can say really is people on this side are rather limited in number. I mean, we can all experience the physical world. Not everybody gets mystical experiences. That's true. So what can we say about that? Um, it's interesting that a Jungian analyst friend of mine used to say often to me, she believed that the next development of the human race would come from people with lesions in their temporal lobe. <laughs> no, she really believes it seriously. Um, she said that people with lesions in their temporal lobe are prone to get very mystical experience about the world. And what's more, they tend to cohere with each other. We're not just random. Mm -hmm. So if everybody had a lesion in the right temporal lobe, perhaps they'd all see the same thing, because we don't by and large. Mm -hmm. So what, all, all we're really saying is a group of people who see the world using different categories of thought, different categories of experience, and we should not expect them to describe the world in our categories. It's just a category error. 
Yeah, I, I, I can follow that, but I can't go to the next step, and therefore I, that, that what, what they, how they see the world gives them a, um, a, a special relationship to what's, to what's real. I mean, I can have a, anybody, everybody who has a tumor in your auditory nerve won't be able to hear. That, True. But that, so, so that doesn't mean that there's some special uh, exist, existential meaning to that. No, on the other hand, if none of us could see, I mean, one of us could, wow, what would we say? That person would have categories of experience we couldn't possibly understand. Yes. Yeah? So that's a similarity I have in mind, really, is that we are limited as human beings. We only see the world in the way we do because of the way we are. But actually, well, the sight one's a very good analogy, isn't it, if you think about it. If everyone was blind except you and me, how would we describe the world? We couldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have in mind, really, is that we are limited. Our knowledge is limited. And I think it's, it's, a, it's really quite a, a gross hubris, actually, on the way scientists tend to, uh, as it were, take upon themselves the whole of reality. I think that's, that's, that's arrogance, actually, and it's not very nice, really.